Although the Khitan still demand periodic tributes, we have pushed them back to the Yellow River. Fortunately, their occupation of Kaifeng was not destructive, and the city has already recovered. Having reviewed the results of the most recent examinations, the Emperor has chosen you to oversee the future development of Kaifeng. He expects it to soon become a cultural center unsurpassed in the world. Return to the classical teachings of Confucius and ensure that all learned people study his ways. Respect to the animals of the land. The emperor has set aside his own palace grounds as a park for creatures from all over China. Fill the park with at least six exotic species. In science and technology, our achievements grow more impressive each day. Our emperor's collection of scholarly books and encyclopedias includes 80,000 volumes. Wonderful devices such as the compass, abacus, and spinning wheel can be found all over our city. Su Song has drawn up amazing plans for an astronomical clock tower. Please help him achieve his goal. Finally, a new threat, the Sha Sha Empire is rising in the West. Our continued policy of appeasement of our enemies with the riches of our land should keep them at bay, as it has the Khitan. Good luck, wise governor. You are presiding over the greatest city in the world, unsurpassed in its culture. Do not disappoint the emperor. G'day mates and welcome back to Emperor. So we're building a brand new monument today. I don't think I've ever built this one before. I haven't built this one before, obviously, because we've never been this far. But uh, this is something we haven't done so far in this playthrough, so it's very, very interesting. I'd like to see what this is. Hopefully it's going to provide a little bit of a challenge because Kaifeng is a city that we've already been in. We've uh, already built it up. So if it's just going to build a quick monument, most of this, I imagine, will be quite easy to do. The only issue I have is a continued policy of appeasement. That, to me, does not seem a sustainable practice, especially when you're exporting all your value and uh, not getting very much back in return. So hopefully we can uh, keep our military built up. I don't remember if I built a big military for the city or not. So let's go in and have a look what we are presented with. Um, oh, I remember this one. This is my one with massive unemployment issues. Here, yeah, 5% and I've hardly leveled these up at all. I built a massive city. I uh, want the requirements again. <laughs> Look at that. Need a, a huge, well, for this game at least, a huge population. And uh, I'm very nearly there with, you know, not even providing ceramics to most of my people. So this is going to be a fairly easy mission, I think. Where's my militaries over here? Where is my military? Oh, that's them there. Okay, so I went out and I must have conquered a city. Let's have a look at the map. Okay, Kaifeng, Pingyao we're trading with. It doesn't appear to be trading with anybody else. That could be a problem. We've got uh, Guangzhou and Pingyao, the only people we're trading with. I thought I was trading with more people. Tanzo. Doesn't exist anymore. Okay, we have ourselves a small problem. This city doesn't exist anymore, so... Uh, there's probably going to be more of them. Qizhou does not exist anymore, so... I'm going to need to go through... Pingya does exist, and they will... Okay, so we can still sell our silk, but they are not selling as much as they used to. That's a concern. Well, they're not buying as much as they used to. They will... This is... Oh, fuck me. Half of them are not trading with me anymore. The Chengdu exists, I think. They exist somewhere. Yeah, they're down here, so I can open up trade with them again and I can probably do that right now because they are agreeable so I'll go do that go and do that off camera in a minute um, so I have to go through and check out all my trade because the city will probably collapse without uh, all the additional things coming in food sources four farms should be enough we need to get unemployment down we need to increase our population slightly and let's have a look at oh, the clock tower is quite small I was hoping it'd be a big one I could put in the center here maybe but um, it doesn't require any laborers, it's going to require wood and stone by the looks of things, so that should be fairly simple to do. Um, I've got more than enough nobles already, 100 people, I've got 300 in Heavenly Compound, so that's not difficult. What I could do actually is, nah, no, it's a bit big. Um, 
I wonder if, actually that, that's probably what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I think I'm going to knock out a couple of these houses here and uh, throw a clock tower in right here next to the, uh, next to the palace. If I can get that, alternatively, alternatively what I can do is knock out a couple of houses here because I don't really need the population and no, it's going to, I'm going to have to take out part of that road as well. Uh, I'm going to have to tinker around with this and try and figure this out. I want to have it built into the city. I'd love to have it in here, but it's just a little bit unwieldy. It's not quite going to fit anywhere. I could put it back here, perhaps. And um, I am not sure how I'm going to do this one. I'm going to play around a bit. Most important thing, though, is to get my trade resolved to make sure my army heads back to their appropriate spots. Because we're going to need to have the military kicked up to stop the, uh, what they call the Zha Zha Empire from coming in and kicking our asses. So I'll be back shortly. Alrighty then, time's moved forward a bit and trade has just begun to open up. So Zhang Ling has opened up, uh, Liao Empire is rejected, which was to be expected, and I thought I sent more off than that. Either way, well, Zhang Ling now, who will buy, well, they'll sell us tea, which we're gonna need, because I don't think our other tea producer is selling anything. Oh no, yeah, you'll sell us, don't know what you're selling. See, so two people will sell us tea. Chengdu, I think we're already importing, so that's fine. We'll have a backup tea importer if required. Wood, I may need for, can I cut wood? That's the question. I can't remember what this mission does. I can't cut timber, so I'm gonna need wood. So when uh, when we eventually finish emptying this point off, I'll be able to replace it with somebody who will sell me timber. You also will uh, eventually disappear. But there's a fair bit of food and tea there that we've got backed up. The cabbage exports are unfortunate, but we can't really get rid of them. Uh, the gods, oh shit, I forgot about that, we're angry gods. In that case, let us get rid of... Um, maybe I can get rid of some cabbage. No, unlikely I'm going to be able to gift all that away, so... I don't think I can get rid of that there, let's just... Uh, probably silk at this point. Oh wow, that was uh, too much. I went from uh, from angry to exalted. So let's see how that manages. I don't want to bring the guy into the city because Chengdu, excellent, and Linan and Zha Zha is rejected. That's fine. So I don't want him in the city because all he does is end up burning through my my tribute, my homage, faster when they're in the city. So he'll probably come back again, but I can just keep getting rid of him. Uh, what it does though is if if they're in the city, they burn from exalted down much much quicker than if you just leave them so Huang Di will sit here for a long long time at content excuse me <clears throat> at contented while uh, while Shendong will burn very very quickly and I don't want that because it's just a waste of time and effort but either way we've got Chengdu now who will not buy anything particularly valuable but will sell me more jade which is great they also sell me tea and lacquer if required which is great so I'll check out Linan in a second so Chengdu here will uh Jade and Lacquer, now they're not selling nearly as much as they were before. So we'll bring in as much as we can. Tea, I'm not going to bother importing just yet. I can use tea from somebody else. And Linan, now you will buy Lacquerware, good. And Carved Jade, good, although we haven't got very much Jade. And Weapons, you're not going to sell me anything particularly valuable. So I've got Linan available as another water trade route if I need to sell more Lacquerware. Uh, and I may need to do that, although my cash is reasonably good at this point. I think lacquer is just going to be for down here, so I don't need to import too much of it. Silk is providing most of my income. And Zha Zha Empire, they need silk, so I can probably get them on, on side. If I bribe them with some silk, as much as I said I don't want to do that, bribing them with silk is effectively a renewable resource for me. Oh, they're all renewable resources, but it's something I can produce locally. So I can send them... A big thing of silk and then hopefully they can actually start buying it because I have a fair bit of stuff available that I want to export so if I send them a large thing of silk I can then buy jade from them and uh, and sell them back and that's not good Liao Empire has become hostile what do they want they need silk as well so I can probably bribe them as well I have to think about that but I'm going to need more silk weavers here so if I throw down another one there and I can't really get too many more in, but that should 
Should cover me. Mm, probably not. I'm going to need a lot more. So I might need to relocate my military over to the central fort area. And, uh, and bump down a couple more guys over here. It's a little bit tight. Okay, done a little bit of urban renewal. And I think this is where I'm going to place the clock tower. Our, uh, thank you, Jaja Empire. That's great. I think this is where I'm going to place the clock tower. If I put that there, what I should be able to do is uh, connect up through to here. It's going to take a little bit of uh, dicking around here because I need to throw in roadblocks. So let's get a... I like the grey ones. One there and one there. And let's put a bit of grand way there to fix that back up. So we've got that in there, that's situated in nicely. I can get a, maybe a natural pond. And maybe the other one as well. Let's throw in a, not a private garden, they're way too big. And a pond with a bridge there. And then I can maybe get a couple of beautiful statues in the center. Some nobles will be nice, I think. With a, I like the white one there. That's nice trees, that's beautiful. So that's the back of that area done. That's uh, a couple of houses gone. So I've lost um, 50 occupants from the Heavenly Compound, but that is not going to affect my victory conditions. And we've got this now here, right in the center. The clock tower should be absolutely stunning. Now I'm gonna require stone, I think, but I can't seem to find... Ah, you will sell me stone. Okay, so Ping Yao. Ping Yao, am I trading with Ping Yao? Yes, I am. And I'm gonna need to buy in stone from them. I'm not gonna buy bean curd or game meat for the time being, because I just need them to trade for things that are actually important to me. We're gonna need a shit ton of stone. Let's bring in 12 though at a time. And of course, steel is still valuable. You now are finished. So I can put in somebody else at a later date, but I'm going to get this set up. I'm gonna tinker around. Actually, I might as well do it on camera. This is not gonna be a very long mission, I don't think. So Jiang Ling, let's have a look what they do. They will buy nothing good from me, but they will sell me tea and wood. So I'm going to probably need wood from them. So I throw down Jangling here. I can import wood. I don't think I need 24. Let's get 12 at a time. And tea. Let's keep 12 tea on hand as well. Um, I probably can export cabbage. A little bit of cabbage. Let's put 18 at a time. Uh, sorry, wheat and cabbage 18 at a time. Because I'm growing heaps of it. And I got more than enough. And th because I threw down a couple of extra farms to absorb my unemployment, which now is going down slightly lower. So what I can do is probably give these guys hemp. Now that will shoot them, actually, better still, I'll give these guys tea. That'll be a smaller overall jump. By giving them tea, Shenong, I don't need you, mate, go away. So by giving them tea, that levels these guys up, which is a smaller jump. They're only gonna go up one level, which is, uh, I think it's to 70 or 75. Whereas these guys are probably going to jump up a couple of levels uh, because they'll go up to the pottery requiring one next. I could knock out a few services to keep them lower, but I don't need that much more employment just yet. So I'm going to tinker around with this, have a couple of rich suburbs, some really well-off people, and uh, a few less well-off. Okay, Liao Empire is launching an invasion on us. That is a little bit troublesome. I mean, we've got a fairly decent military here, but... They could do some real damage because I don't know which direction they're coming from. Hopefully from the northwest, they'll allow me to defend as much as possible. But if they came in, say for example, down here or through the south, they could just rip through most of my city and do a hell of a lot of damage. So I'm going to need to spread my people around a little bit and probably consider bringing on... Uh, she will help with building the monument, but I'm actually going to need military guys. I think Huang Di is the only military guy I've got. Guan Yin doesn't do any military stuff. Confucius doesn't. Men Mencius doesn't. Xiao Yun just likes to eat food. It's going to have to be Guan Di. I think we'll have to bring you on board, mate, and uh, see if we can... Yep, see if we can bring you in. Okay, guys, the Liao Empire has launched an invasion, and they're coming in. Is that the only invasion site? Right there, they're coming in right on top of our armies, which is a bit of a problem because if they destroy one of these buildings, then um, we lose, the entire fort just dies. So for example, if they destroy this here, then that cavalry fort just dies immediately, all eight of them gone. Uh, so I could lose quite a lot of my stuff if I'm not careful, but let's see if we can fight to defend the city.
there we go. Invasion force defeated and only lost the one fort of cavalry. That was pretty tough. I may need to consider relocating my fort uh, into the center of the city. That would have meant that they would have swept over me and done a lot of damage. But uh, there was a very high risk here of them using their catapults to target and wipe out all of my forts. So we did get very lucky there. Either way, I'm going to send everybody back and we can continue building the clock tower. Okay, we've had a bit of a collapse here. All of the different food types we had coming in and they require music access. Why is that? I think that's because they've just got a new type of food. Yes, although actually I may as well turn this entertainment area off because they can all travel down to that one down there. Um, we seem to have a f little bit of a problem here. But it's basically affecting my military quite significantly. You require acrobat access. So they've had a bit of an education issue for some reason, I'm not sure exactly why, but that should be easy enough to fix. The main problem is food. It comes down to, uh, we are eating tasty food, but we're running out. I need additional sources of food to go in my mill. Special gifts, I will take an animal, a vulture. So we are gradually building up. We've got a vulture and a salamander. I'm going to need to start trading those off at some point in the future as well. But our stone is coming in now, and uh, additional food sources should come from these guys up here once everything is sorted there yeah i think i'm gonna to have to do a more in-depth edu uh entertainment system i may have to put something remove this tai chi park because for some reason they're not working okay there we go everyone is leveling up once again for some reason the I'm not sure if I had anything to do with the invasion or not, but the um, entertainment had stopped. So they're all leveling back up to heavenly compounds again, which should then allow me to place down more military because I am a little bit stretched. Can I place down any more forts? Not yet, I can't. Probably because I knocked off those two houses here. Uh, oh, that's looking quite nice. Let's have a quick look at what this uh, clock tower is doing. Not a huge amount by the looks of things. It's just one of those ones where they hammer away and things magically appear. Unfortunately, not quite as good as the, um, bit late there, Huangdi. Not as good as the monuments from Pharaoh. Okay, we've got the population milestone of 5,000 at least. Let's check out. Unemployment is reasonably high. I could probably need to absorb it. I did level these guys up because this was not quite sufficient. Huangdi, you can leave now before you annoy people too much. Um... I'm going to need to absorb the unemployment somehow. There aren't really any industries that we can do. Uh, kiln lacquer makers, there's nothing we can export. So, at this point, probably going to be just a dump. Now, I have looked at transferring them over, but I can't quite... I can place them down now again, that's good. It was taking a while. Trade with the Zha Zha Empire has opened up. That's really good. So, they're going to buy silk and... Uh, well, weapons, but silk from us basically is what we can produce locally. And they will sell us more jade. So to that end, I'm going to throw them up here somewhere. You're our extra carved jade storage. I'm not going to bother with that though. Instead, what we're going to do is place a um, I think I'm actually going to put a roadblock here. Now, hopefully that shouldn't destroy anything down here. So this guy should just patrol this area. If I throw down a trading station to the Zha Zha Empire, I think we're going to have to do it that way. Because the roads are a pain in the ass. And I'm still early enough in this mission that I do care about Feng Shui a little bit. We'll sneak that warehouse in right here. God, this frustrates me, this game. Warehouses are the most annoying things to deal with. So I'm going to keep you empty for the time being because I'm not sure if they distribute jade directly. I think I might need to have a jade warehouse. So I'll have a small jade warehouse just in case. It needs to go from here to there and then out to the industry stuff. But you guys can import additional jade and we will export silk as available. Weapons and tea I'm not going to bother with. You will... Import 12, so we've got now 36 jade coming in. You'll buy 24 carved jade, which means I require another person to sell it. I think Lin Linan will buy more carved jade. So if I throw in, uh, there we go, if I throw them there, what we can do is get 
you nicely set up like this and well I'll get this all set up anyway off camera and there we go nice and harmonious so that's this one taken care of and we can actually import quite a bit of stuff like uh, fish and salt from additional food sources which these other guys are struggling a bit I'm not going to import from you anymore because we want you to focus on steel although you seem to be managing it quite well I think I will I wish I could set priorities like import steel then rice um, but that'll do anyway we can still import a bit from them but I think most of our stuff will come from these guys and it would be worthwhile throwing a storehouse down here somewhere so the mill doesn't have to travel so far but we'll manage for now what are they <laughs> silk delivery men where are you going oh they're going up here to export all that silk so we have a massive backlog of silk here I can probably even actually almost certainly I can bribe the Liao Empire they are currently respectful because I must have bribed them before so let's open trade with them and see if we can actually sell off more we can remove a threat and rather than give them stuff they can buy stuff off us and keep them happy as well and trade with the Liao Empire has opened up this is going to be very very nice and Zha Zha Empire of course I'm trading animals so trying to get my menagerie stuff so let's have a look what we can do with the Liao Empire we can throw them God, I hate this game sometimes we can export silk that's brilliant I'm going to make a fair bit of money off that because that's a huge amount of silk that we're producing here we can also buy in fish and game meat I'm not going to bother with that just yet because I have finished setting up and tweaking down here so that we are getting we're using the warehouses to go up and get uh, fish salt and rice are the three food types we're bringing in so at any given moment we'll have a whole lot of variety in here and it doesn't really matter what it is they can mix and match it all they want we've got three additional backup reserves as well as a huge amount of food down there uh, it looks low at the moment because I've just been giving away huge gifts of homage in order to uh, make space in the warehouses so with that everything is on the clock tower is very nearly complete things appear to be ticking over without my thank you without my um, input they're gonna just manage themselves with all the reserves of supplies just next to it which can be removed at a later date might put a nice uh, pond or something in here 24 masons it's gonna take a while and uh, and then all we need is the animals which I'm holding off so we can actually have a look at the city when it's all completed okay now that we finally cleared out the warehouse that was down here it was uh, someone who was not trading with us I've removed the Liao Empire and I'm gonna replace them down here harmoniously placed and that will allow us to export silk from a much closer location as well uh, it could be worth my time to throw down and rearrange this for a couple more uh, actually if I can get more weavers in back here no I can't it's only one space and I'd have to move a bunch of stuff there hmm more weavers would be a good idea I've got more than enough silk raw silk is I've got a whole warehouse full of it and a bunch of guys just sitting around here so squeezing a few in wouldn't hurt the only problem is where can I fit them and uh, at this point it's turning into a bit of a spaghetti back here so I think I might even throw them up here that might be a good idea and with that we've massively increased our silk production pretty much doubled it effectively or not far off anyway maybe an extra 40% or something so that will allow us to export maximum amount of silk and, uh, and use the rest of it for homage and gifts not that anyone seems to need it at this point we've got more money coming in and uh, I suppose I could get that other god yes this lady here Zhu Wing Ma or whatever her name is I could bring her in with um, this point I'll probably just end up using a raw silk simply because we've got so much of it and <laughs> more of it coming in look at it it's pouring in but by getting rid of all that I can bring her in and allow this to go just that little bit quicker but unemployment is good the city is stable all the houses are at least at this sort of darker um, black grey sort of color rather than the crappy thatch houses we had before so we are looking a little bit better more modern and a nice beautiful clock tower I think this is going to be the final thing anyway final mason here and there we go clock tower complete precise time by day and night isn't that beautiful now which god is happy with that looks like uh, Zhao Jun is exalted and you seem to be exalted as well because I don't think I gifted you that much so we can get these two guys in the city hopefully it's him because he will give us a free um, that's an interesting thing food quality 
And uh, New Year's Festival is free, that's what I was looking for. So it doesn't cost us any... Ooh, it doesn't cost us food. I know it costs... wouldn't cost us money. But I imagine free means it won't cost us any food either. So he would be kind of helpful in the city, although at this point we've got so much food coming out of our asses that he wouldn't just be surprised. Um, we've got crap everywhere. Look at this stuff. This is a very wealthy city. So all I need now is the... What's happened? Oh, my population's gone down by one. Why is that? I don't know. Someone probably died. So I need the um, menagerie animals, and we are effectively one mission. Well, I found out what the population issue was. These houses here appear to be ever so slightly unstable. Why? They need drama access. So for some reason, that's too far away. Putting it over here in the corner is too far away. I need to keep that near the front in future. So, to that end, I'm going to have to throw down a drama school, if I can find it. Another drama school, I'm going to throw it right here, which is not harmonious. Thanks, Shenong, I don't care. I'm going to throw in some grand way, just to make sure that's connected to the road. So hopefully that will ensure that they stay properly happy. That'll get our population up a bit higher, but I mean, I don't need to worry about stabilizing this. I can just bump up one of these by giving them ceramics, which we have absolute buttloads of it. We've got 28 ceramics there and, uh, and a huge amount just waiting. I've actually even knocked off a couple of these because we had so many that I could uh, send out. I could skyrocket our population to about 8,000 quite easily, I think. In the interest of making the city look as beautiful as possible, I've just thrown down a ceramics and a tea shop for both of these areas here. So they should go through and... Uh, what's the word? They should go through and buy everything up and level these guys up to maximum. So we're going to have an absolutely stunning looking area once they eventually manage to filter through and get all the goods in. We have still working on the ceramics. We're not getting tea immediately. But uh, that should level them up before the Liao Empire. I sent off to the Liao Empire and gave them a wild pig. So they should give me back. Uh, this is it. This is where we win the mission. Gift of Panda. Accept. And the victory is coming up effectively immediately as these guys level up to their final state. You have built Kaifeng into a shining beacon for the world to see all of the glories of the Song Dynasty. Nowhere in the world is there a city such as Kaifeng. Only here is scholarship so highly respected. Only in Kaifeng do the sciences and the arts reign supreme. Even the beasts of the land, sea, and air occupy a special place near and dear to our emperor's heart. There we go, guys. We've beaten Kai Feng the second time. Uh, invaders from the north, indeed. We did manage to fight them off, despite them coming from the east. With our beautiful clock tower over here to boast of our accomplishments as well, keeping time. And I do say that, where was it? Uh, nowhere in the world is a city such as Kai Feng. Uh, 5,000 people, just over. Uh, I built uh, in Alexandria, I built a massive lighthouse, huge caesarium, mausoleum, and a population of must have been 10 or 12,000 people. So that was a few thousand years before this one, at least a thousand years before this one. So perhaps it's a little bit uh, ethnocentric here. But either way, that is the end of the episode. So smash that thumbs up button if you do indeed enjoy all this beautiful emperor content. Uh, if not, thumbs down button there waiting for you. But drop a comment, at least let me know how I can improve and what you don't like about it. A thumbs down by itself means bugger all. So take care guys and I will see you next time.